Hello everyone, let's learn about the methacholine challenge test. The information presented is following the American Thoracic Society and ERS guidelines. Before we get right into this, let's recall some background information. Asthma is a disorder of the airways with the following features and a hyper-responsiveness to a variety of triggers. This hyper-responsiveness, or so-called twitchy airways, can be evaluated with many types of stimuli. It's bronchial hyper-responsiveness. It's an abnormal increase in airflow limitation following exposure to a stimulus. Alternatively, a threshold response of a greater than or equal to 20% fall in FEV1 occurring at a lower point as compared to a healthy individual. Let's take a look at direct and indirect stimuli to evaluate hyperresponsiveness. A direct stimulus causes airflow limitation by direct action on effector cells, such as airway smooth muscle, bronchial endothelial, and mucus producing cells, thus limiting airflow. An indirect stimulus causes airflow limitation by an action of cells other than the effector cells, such as inflammatory cells and neuronal cells, which then interact with the effector cells, limiting the airflow. Examples of direct stimuli are listed here, but the most widely used and standardized is methacholine. There are many examples of indirect stimuli. However, an exercise protocol is most commonly used. The methacholine challenge test is one method of assessing the airway responsiveness. In this test, a patient inhales an aerosol of one or more concentration of methacholine. The results of the PFTs performed before and after inhalation are used to quantify the response. So, keep in mind that this test is most clinically useful when a diagnosis of asthma is not clear-cut. There are some contraindications to consider, such as moderate to severe airflow limitation, inability to perform spirometry maneuvers, recent history of myocardial infarction or stroke, hypertension, known aortic aneurysm, recent eye surgery, or an inability to perform any of the testing maneuvers. To prepare for this test, the patient cannot have any coffee, tea, soda, or chocolate on the day of the study. Also, any of the following medications must be withheld. Lastly, a consent form must be signed after explaining the test without implementing any bias. Performing the test. We are going to need a nebulizer and a spirometer, as per ATS guidelines. Methacholine is a synthetic derivative of acetylcholine and directly stimulates airway muscarinic receptors, causing bronchospasm. The first step is to perform a baseline spirometry. You look at the FEV1. If the FEV1 is less than 60% predicted, you don't perform the test. If it is greater than 60%, the next step is to give the patient an inhalation of diluent. We review the FEV1 again on the spirometry. If it decreases by 20%, you stop. If it does not, you continue giving incremental doses of methacholine until the time you reach the maximum concentration of 16 milligrams per milliliter or dose of 400 micrograms. If in between at any time the FEV1 falls by 20%, you have a positive methacholine challenge test. If there is a positive methacholine challenge test, you stop, administer a short-acting bronchodilator, and after 5-10 to 10 minutes, repeat the spirometry to return the FEV1 to baseline. 
If you have reached the maximum dose and the patient's FEV1 has not decreased by 20%, it means that the patient has a negative methicoline challenge test. If for any reason you need to stop the test, record signs and symptoms, give albuterol, wait 10 minutes, and perform spirometry. The final test report should include PC20 FEV1, which is the concentration that causes a 20% fall in FEV1. Please note, the lower the PC20, the more severe the airway hyperresponsiveness. For the safety of the patient, there should be trained staff close by in case of emergency, medications to treat bronchospasm, any stethoscope, sphygmomanometer, and a pulse oximeter should also be available. To ensure technician safety, there should be minimal exposure, and the testing room should have adequate ventilation. Keep in mind the various technical factors and aerosols. ERS has recently updated the guidelines. It suggests the results be reported as PD20 rather than PC20. It allows comparable results from different devices such as nebulizers or dosimeters as long as the delivery characteristics are known. The recommended starting dose is 1 to 3 micrograms. Subsequent steps are doubled or quadrupled till a maximum dose of 400 micrograms is achieved. In summary, the major value of the methacholine challenge test is to exclude a current diagnosis of asthma. Positive challenges are consistent, but not entirely diagnostic of bronchial asthma and must be interpreted in conjunction with other clinical features.